Hi, uh, good morning, everyone, and thank you for having me here. Okay, so I'm going to, this is basically a summary of what I'm going to talk about today. Um, first, uh, what's my open math? Uh, or the acronym is MOM, M O M. Uh, actually, David, yesterday in his presentation, talked about uh, he's a more seasoned uh, user of my open math than I am. I uh, became familiar with my open math a little bit more than a year ago. So I'm very new with it. Uh, I was at a conference for LibreTex, and one of the participants pointed my open math. I'm a physics uh, professor, uh, so my open math, he didn't, the title, he didn't make me think that it can be useful uh, for me. Um, now, after I discovered it, I found it very useful, and I'm still learning how to use it. Uh, sometime in the spring last year, sometime at around March, April, that's when I discovered, uh, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing it correct, uh, correctly, Jezex Graph. Now, I, uh, so I'm not as well versed with it, uh, but I'm learning and I'm enjoying it. Uh, and I thought, given the presentation today, is to give you examples of other uses of the utility that are probably uh, not what was intended, uh, what it was intended for. Okay, so uh, let's see. Uh, so what's my open math? My open math is uh, a homework delivery system. It's open source. Uh, it's so far it is free for users, um, and it is run by just one person and a bunch of collaborators. One of them is David, uh, who presented yesterday. Uh, most of the content is developed by editors like us. So the questions in those assignments are developed by educators. Uh, and we can assign uh, homeworks or whatever type of assignment we would like to offer uh, to our students for free. And that's, that's the advantage of it. Um, and my open math uses a lot of different uh, open source resources. So one of them is JSX Graph. The way uh, JS Graph uh, is being used in my open math is two ways. Uh, one, using the CDN, like the way it is used most of the time. Uh, okay, so I'm going to open an example. This is an example of something using the CDN. So it's uh, this image here is being produced with it. I'm going to open the actual question. I'm presenting this in a classroom, so I'm not as familiar with the setup, but I have a class uh, just right after this. Uh, so this is the way it is used, very much like you would normally use JS, uh, JS Graph. Okay, so this is the code, the script, and then just below it, there is the code for the question. Actually, the text for the question, the code is above here. Um, now, one good thing about my open math 
you can algorithmically change variables. So I can set variable values here and I can assign them uh, in the script here. It has to be a variable with a dollar symbol in front of it, but I can, for example, I can set the color instead of red, something variable. I can set anything I want using the code there. But otherwise, it works the same way. Now, the other use see, is uh, using the MyOpenMath uh, version of the utility. So here, I'm going to open the kite. No, actually, I can open anything. You know, for example, this one. Okay, so it's a question in my open math. Just made this particular diagram. Now, if I open the question. So the JS graph here is within the code of the actual question. And you might notice the syntax is a little different. And from what I heard yesterday in David's talk, he's the one who probably developed for my open math uh, this version of JS graph. So it is, it is somewhat here. So the syntax is slightly different. Now, how does that work? So my open math, when you edit a question, you have two menus for helping write the question. So if I open this, just a simple HTML page, and it explains everything that you can use, almost everything. Now, in addition to that is what they call the macro library. And JS, uh, JX, SX graph is one of the macros here. And basically, so an introduction and the various tools that are available. So not all tools that are available in the main version are available here. But this is what's available. And then for each of the tools, they provide an explanation, simple explanation, how it is used, the parameters you can use, and an example. Now, one of the things they do, let's see. I think for each one of them, I'm not sure I saw it here. For this one, okay, no, actually it will not be here, but for one of the things is attributes. Uh, that's an interesting feature. Attributes is um, another variable they added here that uses the JSON and um, you can use any of the properties of JSX, uh, JSX graph, the main one, the mother one, you can use them here. So for example, if I need to add an end or an end arrow, it's not available here. But by using the attributes, I can do that. Uh, one thing I must note, uh, with my open math, the people 
who participate in it are very helpful. Uh, for example, someone new like me, I resort to questions quite often. They have a forum. Actually, I can probably show you where it is. So we can go here. That's the main page. They have what they call support course. And they have several forums. And uh, you can ask uh, questions, for example, how do I? And then other people, other educators might answer, or the main developers might answer. For example, I wanted to add an image to one of uh, the, the questions I was using, and it was not enabling me to add the image. I, I looked, but it was not allowing me to add the image. And I asked, for, I asked about it, and they added it within a day. So the feature was added within a day. So uh, they are very responsive, very helpful that way. Uh, how did I get into using JSX Graph? Uh, actually, using that forum, I saw. So this is a question developed by someone else. And it's all done by JSX Graph. The numbers here, the variables here change dynamically. And a person can assign a question using this. And we have a very nice graphic. Um, now, one thing good about JS, uh, JSX, I mean, my open math, you can find older versions here, like derived from. And you can go even further down if it was derived. So this was the original question was using just a snapshot picture. And uh, the gentleman uh, who worked on the JSX graph version kind of used this as a startup. OK. So that was, I felt like it was neat. Um, now, the, he has another one similar. Okay, a kite on a tree. Now, but what I really liked is when I started looking at this. Now, for example, this one. So if you would like to measure this angle, we have a protractor. You can move. And you can read the actual values. So that opened up a lot of doors for me seeing this kind of interaction. Some of the things, for example, I teach about is measurements and certainty. So having a tool like this, uh, doing something like this, I, I thought would be very helpful. Probably one of uh, the examples where I started is basically something like this. So this is one I put. If we ask for new versions, you see the letters, the order in, is in different places. So that's algorithmically generated, and the answers here are based on the order in here. Now that one, this was the original question. You could not change the order of the letters, and it didn't look really that good. So I took this and modified it the other way. Uh, but something that maybe is fun, like yesterday, when David started talking about how he writes code, I kind of I was testing how I do mine right now. So I took that the one I just showed you, that one, the main feature was adding the image. So I added two images. And then I looked at another one where I had a slider. 
and I had I have a vernier caliper. Okay, now here I didn't finish the work. I did this within uh, a few minutes while he was uh, presenting his part. So this is from another question, but basically, so I can algorithmically set it to come up at different positions and ask the students to read the value and check the value. And, you know, the nice thing about JSX graph, that you can zoom. You can actually zoom and look at it very clearly. <laughs> uh, I thought it's quite neat. This, I put this together yesterday. Okay. So I'll show you examples of how, how I use it. So essentially, I have a large list here other than the few ones that I showed you. So I have a large list. So it's a question of choosing. Uh, one disadvantage of using the MOM version is essentially uh, it's available only through my open math. So it's not available everywhere. And to be able to port it elsewhere, you have to change the coding. And unfortunately, I don't have much, much time for that. Okay, so let's start with, the, uh, with this. So this is a simple one, uh, asking the students to calculate the center of mass. So you see different students will get different versions. And so it's a very simple graph. And this is where I got it from. Okay, this is generated by the graph and method uh, that my open math uses. Okay, one of the things, uh, it is easy to use this. The only problem, you don't have full control over, uh, over everything. When you have axes, uh, you cannot control how well the labels are written. You cannot easily add vectors. You can to a certain degree, but, you, uh, but it's not as sharp, and it does not give you as much flexibility. So that's one example to use. So I'm... You know, so that's another thing. The positions and the angles of the masses are randomly generated. This one here is basically, uh, I use assignments as a formative assessment, trying to teach students how to do things. So here for a rectangle, how to find the center of mass. So I'm showing them how the integral is. And then, okay, let me show all parts. Okay, then we do it for a triangle, half circle. You know, so I go in trying to explain how it is done. Essentially, I get them to do it by gradually increasing the complexity. And this is somewhat like a tutorial. One of the things that was quite awkward in making, in doing it with my open math, I tried to set it up for use in JSX graph, like how to build simple electrical circuits. So here are the components. And very much to build a circuit, you just connect the lines, add several of them and stuff like that. So this is, this is essentially the, the different components I made. And each one of them has parameters that one can change and um, uh, the only problem with this, when I open it with all of these, it's quite slow to load. 
but uh, a circuit with just few elements, it's not that bad. Um, and essentially, I can open like this resistor, I can have this resistor depending on the parameters horizontally, vertically, or at a, or at a slant, at an angle. Uh, I didn't set it up to rotate everything at an angle except the resistors, uh, but the, all the others, you can have them horizontally or vertically. Uh, that's uh, essentially a library of uh, electrical components for simple circuits. Okay, uh, are we still on? Just the electricity came off for me here, so. <laughs> but it seems everything okay. Main... <laughs> okay, perfect. Okay, so this one. So a simple question for introductory physics: getting them. This is a position graph, and getting them to identify which graph does what. And so using the sliders, they can go through each one of them and then can see them all if they want. And then, you know, the good thing about graphics like this is you can have it for position and you can have it for velocity, basically the same thing. Now, one of the things that I did with graphs as well, okay, let's see. All of these questions were not named uh, purposely for this conference. So I tried to put them in a folder where I can see what I can use, but the ordering is not perfect here. So this is another one using kinematics. Um, so in this case, it's a velocity versus time graph. Now, for each of the segments that they have to answer questions about, I provide coordinates and the slope if the slope is not evident. So they will not have to put effort trying to calculate it because I assume that they know already how to do that. Uh, and then at the end of uh, the last question, it's asking them about displacement between algorithmically generated positions. And basically you get uh, essentially the different segments that they need to uh, calculate to get uh, the displacement. Okay, let's see. One thing that's That's very useful. Uh, physics teachers that saw this uh, kind of like this quite a bit is doing free body diagrams. Actually, this is the original one. No, no. What is it? So this one, they have different vectors they can select with the slide. Actually, I didn't mean to open this one. Okay. So it comes up just like this with a bunch of them visible. And the students are supposed to identify the forces and position them at the right orientation based on the situation in the question. And you notice here, as I act on the vectors, 
these numbers change. So normally, the way I use this in a question, these fields are hidden, but that's what I check. I check the values of these, and based on these, that's the way they get the grades for their free body diagram. So that's... Uh, physics folks like that. I'm checking my time here. I think I sure I give an overview of several examples. Uh, uh, some of the challenges that I have when working with JS, uh, JSX graph. Gliders. Uh, you can set domains for the various functions, but the gliders seem not to abide by these domains. So I can have the glider going left and right when it's supposed to stop at that particular area. Uh, it's an annoyance. It's no big deal. Uh, but that uh, when a glider is on a function, uh, I wish that it sticks to the domain for that function. Uh, whenever I have to add labels, it's an if, uh, effort to figure out how to position them. Uh, it's you guys have <laughs> uh, a lot of uh, discussion in the in the website how to put the labels, but it's still it's still a little tricky. Uh, Combining shapes. So let me show you one thing, for example. So this one, I didn't do it for myself, really. Uh, another teacher in my open math, since I get a lot of help from, from teachers, and that, another teacher needed something like this, so I did this. Um, now, essentially, for reading the meniscus position of a graduated sea lion. You know, so one can move it like that to read more carefully, stuff like that. Now, I'm not sure if you know, if you can see it. So the fluid that I have on top, whatever I have on top, is made up of two shapes, a rectangle and part of an ellipse, essentially. And you see there is a separation here. And I could not really group them and get them to work together somewhere. Uh, another difficulty that I have is basically the ordering like the Z level, what to put on up front. So uh, that's that's something I I would like to learn more, uh, learn more how to do it. I also like to learn how to do animations uh, and if they have any use for my teaching. I do animation using Canvas right now with my open math. Uh, you know, JavaScript and Canvas. So I do some animations like that, but maybe I can do JSX graph for that. And also, I would like to learn about the 3D users. You have a lot of cases in physics where you deal with 3D, especially when torque is involved uh, and stuff like that, when cross products are involved. I think that's all. <laughs>